All right, this one is about the velocity. Um, as you can see, I have a whole lot of other operators in here that I'll get to, to kind of show you why I have them in there. But uh, we'll start off with just velocity. Uh, the best way to display velocity is just using vectors. Uh, so you can switch these uh, from ticks to shaded color for float display. And then point three display, you can use ticks position, ticks color, vectors, and shaded color. Uh, so vectors is pretty good for, for this. Um, so you can see it's taking the velocity. Uh, it's using um, velocity uses the time, current time, time, uh, next frame time, and, and previous frame time in order to calculate what the velocity is. And you can, um, you know, if you wanted to just this alone, say you go to shaded color, you could output this data. Um, you know, you might want to normalize it. Uh, <clears throat> but you could output this for rendering, for example, if you wanted to output a vector color channel uh, for post motion blur. So, but that's not what we're doing here. We'll go back to vectors. And uh, so let's kind of step through what I did. Uh, in this case, I wanted the ball to kind of stretch based on uh, its direction. So I have the velocity and then I have a vertex output. And this vertex output is just a storage. So I'm just storing this to a map channel two. Then I'm clamping that data. So I want to clamp it between zero and one and I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. Um, now we have a vertex input, which in this case I'm using just the average normals. So basically the normals of each vertice. And then, uh, then I invert that because I want the back side to be selected and not the front. And I clamp it just to make sure that you know it's zero to one again. And then, uh, then I use my uh, map channel tr map channel two again. So this map channel two is now being placed on that uh, selected area. And then I have a scale, and the scale is what's stretching the the uh, the mesh in that direction. So. And then I have a smooth, just to smooth it out a little bit. And at the end, I have a tension to form that's just taking the edge links. And um, and I think I'm just doing a, a, a stretch, so the stretched area. So all that put together kind of gives you this fun effect. So this one's one of the more complex ones, but um, once you kind of get your head wrapped around it, um, it, it makes sense. So the big thing is that you're taking the average normals from the original uh, data and you're doing a dot product. So the dot product is, I think it's in the help as well, but um, basically you're creating a gradient uh, between uh, 180, I think it's 180 degrees, averaging of the, between the velocity and the average normal of the, of the mesh. So if you think about that, whatever point, whatever direction the, velocity is pointing compared to whatever the direction is the um, average normal it'll create a, a value a float value um, and then we convert that to a gradient so um, that's kind of how it works oh and another thing the uh, if I turn off the clamping you'll kind of see what happens values don't really fall off anymore and in this case it just stretches it way out could have also used a curve instead of a clamp uh, in this case clamp was just real easy here's another case I'm using the same um, same kind of setup the only difference is that I have a distort in here as well And you can see oh, that it doesn't do anything. Uh, it must be because I need to turn the uh, data channel on. So you can see the areas that um, where I want it stretching, I'm just doing this kind of cartoony thing. And then I have a distort. This is the biggest key on this one. And I have a noise here, which you can adjust. You can make larger or smaller. And if you look at the 
believe it's this noise, I have it in objects XYZ space. If we did it in explicit mapping channel, we have to make it much smaller. And then it wouldn't actually move. Or undulate. All right, so that's velocity.